Hello and welcome to the Pixel Street Podcast live reaction for Ubisoft Forward 2020. Uh, we got, as you can see, three minutes until it starts here. Um, John, you excited? Uh, of all the shows so far this year, this is probably the one I'm least excited for. But that's really only because we know pretty much everything that's going to be shown off already. <laughs> so, Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, but... I don't know. It could be exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it could be looking good. But, uh, yeah. I, hopefully there's some surprise in there. But uh, Far Cry 6 is already confirmed to be shown off. Uh, like we said on the podcast, that's the last game that they have yet to reveal. Um, but we already know it's coming out in, like, February, I think. It was January or February. Uh, actually, the full trailer they're going to show here was leaked. I haven't looked at it or anything yet. But I, if you really I looked to, at it, but it was in a different language. Gotcha. So the trailer um, leaked, but I think it was in like French or something. Gotcha. Um, and then uh, the Assassin's Creed Valhalla release date leaked, but and that gameplay leaked a while ago. I didn't look at that either. Um, Let's see. Uh, we know that they're going to talk about Rainbow Six Quarantine. Probably some Rainbow Six Siege in there somewhere, too. Um, Do we have Watch any Dog idea how long this is going to be? Have they said? No. I don't think so. Um, all they've said is that it's pre-recorded. Um, so there is a certain amount of time. At least it's not going to be as cringy as that Nintendo Treehouse thing the other day. I didn't but, uh that. It, it wasn't good. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, also, Ubisoft yesterday let go a lot of, like, big names at their company because of their sexual abuse allegations put against them. They put out a release earlier today. Let me pull that up quick. I should have already had it up. Um, but it was essentially saying... Here we go. Uh, Ubisoft Forward comes during a time of big internal change. Because all the content has been pre-recorded, we wanted to recognize that the issues we're currently dealing with won't be addressed directly in the show. We still have significant work to do and are committed to this process. We will provide more updates soon. So a lot of big changes happening at Ubi, but uh, none of them are going to be directly mentioned in this video. So... Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Um, interesting that they would do that the day before a big event like this. Well, they were really starting to get a lot of heat for not doing anything for as long as they did. So, I mean, it's better late than never. But right, we got oh 10 boy. seconds here. All right. I might be a little behind you here. Let me refresh. This is Ubisoft. Explore our world. There we go. See the games. See the games. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about their roller derby game that they had coming. Hi everyone, I'm Neelam Kumar and I'm very excited to be co-hosting the first Ubisoft Forward with the talented Yusuf Magid. Yusuf. Today's show is all about getting up close and in-depth with all the exciting games we have in production here at Ubisoft. I'm Yusuf, but there's no time to waste. So let's head straight for the streets of futuristic London and see what the hackers of DeadSec are getting into. It's about time. All right, here we go. Not actual gameplay. We're off to a good start. Yeah, woo. First, they came for the foreigners, and I did not speak out, because I was not a foreigner. <laughs> then, they came for the protesters, and I did not speak out, because I was not a protester. Then, 
then they came for the journalists. This really isn't getting me excited for this game. <laughs> yeah, this isn't very hype. Like, I would rather no. them have just been like, here's Watch Dogs, Legion, and just show us gameplay yeah. right away. Yeah, like that's essentially what they did last year with it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I this don't need is... a hype trailer for the story. No. Because I am not we already sure. got a good idea of what's happening at last year's E3. Unless they changed it drastically since then. Yeah, maybe. Alright, I'm down with hovercrafts like that. Yeah, that's cool. Man, this is gonna end with him dying, right? Since you can play as every NPC like last year's. <laughs> I would assume. Yeah. Man, imagine though, if they go this entire time without showing any gameplay. <laughs> any gameplay, yeah. Yeah, yeah ima imagine like, if, this is all we get. Yeah, me. imagine if we don't get a release date today. Right. Uh, like, that's not a good look. Wow, this is going on way too long. I feel like they went back in, they're like, okay, we gotta make something look like Cyberpunk. Yeah, they probably did. Everybody's excited for Cyberpunk. Let's get something that looks like Cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. Cut a trailer to look like a Cyberpunk trailer. to the resistance. Here's a welcome gift for our new members. But the disappearance of the criminal... You could have told me it was a bloody costume party. Try it on. The new key suspect has been identified as David Ford, a 43-year-old oh, London driver. Oh, shit. He has no oh, no. David Ford. People have been asked not to approach him. The authorities advise all residents they trapped him in, man. Mm-hmm. I'm Clint Hawking. Clint has been a longtime creative force here at Ubisoft, and now he's bringing this vision to Watch Dogs Legion. Um, so yeah, what we just saw was an amazing short wow. film by the director Alberto Mielgo. Is a short that, film? Uh, was a really amazing Watch short Dogs film Legion, there. And looks at, at the game and the universe and the characters through his incredible... Uh, so is that like not related to the story at all? <laughs> I, I think so. Like I think film. it was Watch just Dogs a random Legion thing thrown up. Ordinary heroes setting aside their differences in order to come together because there's not really a main yeah. protagonist in this. You can yeah, but there, there's still so going to be a story though. Who you see in the open world, you yeah, but it's not going to like you, you help really matter. Play the NPCs themselves don't matter. And I'll do whatever you want. Sounds like a dead sec problem. Leave it to us. And that's how you recruit them into your team, and then they become the heroes of the game and, and the stars of your story. And what are you doing in my flat? You with Albion? Please, think more underground. You with Albion? I'm tickled, but think more underground. What, dead sick? Yeah, right, and I'm Che Guevara. You're done. And they make the story not only, you know, unique to them, but unique to you as the player and, and personal to you because they're, you know, heroes that you've chosen and invested in. What would I say to fans? I guess I'd say, you know, uh, take care of yourselves, stay safe. Welcome to the resistance. Okay. <laughs> you know, maybe say a release date. A modern metropolis. All right. Here's some actual gameplay. Wow, that took way too long to get Only into this. Thousand years to build it up, and one night to tear it all down. Oh my God! Listen up. Get all your units to move in and lock down the city. With London under attack by a mysterious terrorist, 
the government turns to a private military company called Albion to keep everyone safe. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, what could go wrong, John? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nigel Cash, uh, nothing. CEO of Albion. He's kindly stepped up to establish order. Smashing. Understand. Yeah, they got the voice actor from Wild Thornberries. Myself. Yeah. <laughs> Dashing. He will stop at nothing to permanently no, it's smashing. City. He doesn't say dashing ever? No, it's smashing. I know he says smashing. There's no way he never said dashing. Smashing is the only thing he says. Meet Mary Kelly, head of the most powerful crime syndicate in London. Be sure and spread the word. She and her goons are using the dark web to sell everything from Holy crap, she has a joker people. face. Microchip is scary, I know, but I got to keep tracks on my merchandise, don't I? You make me a slave. You do not want to ruffle her feathers. With the city out on its ass, it now falls on you to build a resistance and take back London. All right, everyone. Faces on, guns out. Any of the brave Londoners you see walking the streets can be recruited into your team. Like him, her, or even her. <laughs> I like assassinating someone with a spray paint cane. In our first mission, we need to get some dirt on Nigel Cass, and that means breaking into Albion headquarters inside the Tower of London. All the hardy souls you see here are people we have recruited from the streets of London. They all have unique abilities, and you're free to tackle this mission with whoever you like. Dear God, my eyes. Badly. Zip up, get to work, and let's never talk about this again. Like everyone in DedSec, Arthur can hack pretty much whatever. But as a construction worker, he has a particular set of tools that make him handy. So this guy is just really good at hitting people with a wrench. <laughs> yep. And apparently he he only wears construction uniforms. Yeah. And who needs a regular old gun when you have a bloody nail gun? And a nail gun. <laughs> This doesn't feel very watchdogs like. Perhaps we could approach this mission differently. If you'd rather keep I'm fine with that because I'm not really a big fan of watchdogs. I'm gonna say though, last year got me excited for this game. Everything they've shown so far this year is kind of killing the mood on that. I mean, it, it's just the same stuff as last year essentially. Yeah, it's just more than fine. What an adorable creepy crawler. Yeah. Here we are. Let's class the place up. A drone expert does have the unique ability to summon their own drone. This little darling is fast and stealthy. She aims, she fires, she hits. So the, the way I'm seeing this is like, in previous Watch Dogs games, you were one guy, you would level up every perk, essentially. But in this one, you need different people for different jobs. She can also hack enemy drones, yep. turning the tide in her favor. And if you are not into direct confrontation... I do like the part of it, though, where it's like... If they die, they're perma dead. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Recruiting an Albion officer like kind of very like stated, a, a, stated to K, yeah. But it'll get you inside restricted Albion areas. Don't mind me, just doing recon for a bunch of insurgents. However, do anything suspicious, and she'll probably wind up with a bullet in the back of her head. You've been approved for entry. We're missing the human element. I can get the defense minister on the line right now. Well, if you feel you must. Criminals running our streets. Illegals threatening our families. The police commissioner himself. Assassinated by terrorists. Well, that seems to be enough evidence. Next up. We're oh, no. organ farming the head military guy is a bad guy. Who could have seen that one coming? The fires expect high quality stuff. And we need a hard nut for this. Impairing our frontal lobe again, are we? Bugs, 
Don't disturb me in my natural habitat. Say hello to Mickey. The man lives for his team. I put another rare on my chest. And doesn't mind getting his hands dirty. Nah. So this guy's just a hand the hand brawler. Yeah. And he's passed out. Ah, well. <laughs> I thought they were gonna say that's how he died. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Let's go with someone a bit more professional. Oh, cool! They added John Wick. <laughs> it's almost crass to call him a hitman. I'd even call him an artist. This guy's gameplay looks so, like, slowed down. Is it just me? <laughs> no, I agree. It kind of seems slow mo. Yeah. But like halfway slow mo. He's the bastard responsible. Like he's just like yeah. walking up to everybody he attacks. Done and dusted. Yeah. Not bad, not bad that was a little weird. Cool. Not everyone in London is a legendary assassin or a super spy, but everyone can be a hero. What was that guy doing? <laughs> I don't know. It's like a WWE wrestler. Yeah. This is... They're spending a long time on this. Mm-hmm. Pre-order now right. on WatchdogsGame.com, October 29th. Okay. All right. We finally have a, a date. Living, breathing city, That's good. With unique locales and characters has always been a central pillar of the Watchdog series. So what goes into building those worlds? Here's a man. That Mike, crime boss one. lady, though. Like every time I see her face, I'm like, oh, that's the Joker. My it's it's coming Mike. out at that weird time. Artist, and we'll talk about it Watch after. Dogs Legion at Ubisoft Toronto. Being a level artist, I think, is the coolest job in video games because we do get the freedom to to kind of like pick and choose what little details we want to. Man, get. we're still and talking Watch Dogs Legion. I know. I thought that would have been the end. Stories that we want to with tell the dates the that we're assigned to. How far in into this are we now? Things and, you know, like small little Easter eggs. Uh, 15, 15 minutes, minutes in. in. I, I have wow. to, I, I have to imagine this is going to be like an hour long thing. And, then and we're already a quarter of the way through. Too, and there may or may not be something in London that is a boat filled with cats in some capacity. So. <laughs> I was fortunate enough to go to E3 last year. Okay. Some of the people that I was showing our demo to were from London. So no matter where I dropped them in the city, they would go, oh my God, this feels like Camden. This, you know, this feels like Southwark. This feels like Westminster. When people are talking about some detail that I've put into the world and they're excited about it. Like that feels so good as somebody who, you know, builds these worlds with care. I love it. <laughs> Had to get that bike image in. <laughs> and now some all hollow. hollow fans. In just a few weeks, I've never you'll played be able it. to battle it out with your Me either. legends on iOS and Android devices. I know Rayman and Lara Croft are in it though, so it's probably a new cool. character. It's pretty much their Smash Brothers game. Uh, I see now. Yeah. Come in the mobile. Okay. Definitely not for me, that's for sure. Yeah, I'd rather play Smash. Yep. And if this is the reason why Rayman's not in Smash, that would be disappointing. <laughs> See, there he time. is. Yeah, they've been in there for a while. August they've got 6th. a lot of. Okay. Cool. And now. And there's a bear skin. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I want to dive back into one of the most beloved fantasy franchises. What a game. weird shot. You got you covered. Yeah, like, why is he in front of that? Like, if you're not going to zoom in on it. 
Yeah. Might and magic. Era of chaos. Might and magic. I've heard that before. E -O -C. I'm trying to think. Is that like an expansion? It was Era of Chaos. Oh, okay. That's what it said <clears> at the <throat> beginning. I don't think I've ever played this. Oh, it's, it's another mobile, mobile game. game. Yeah. Okay. That's unfortunate. Yeah, uh, this is... Wow. This is something, Ubi. <laughs> It's an event, John. I'll give him mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Man. <laughs> oh. oh, Rainbow Six Siege. But it looks cartoony, so this might be that, uh... This might be that, uh... It's another mobile game. I think they announced it last year. But they're just bringing in Siege characters, I guess. Was it Tom Clancy Elite Squad? I don't even remember. It, it's that mobile game that they like showed uh, the guy from Splinter Cell in, and everyone was so mad that oh. that was the only <laughs> thing they've shown him in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, see, there he is. Yeah, this is that phone game. Oh, man. Ubi. This is the mobile <laughs> game showcase, I guess. Yeah. I mean, that was pretty cool. I guess, but that's not how the gameplay is going to be on this. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> Don't make this is just a cinematic. This. Yeah. It's just a bunch of elite Ubi's. squad coming yeah. soon. Pre-register now for the pistol. <laughs> for Montagna, yeah, it's great. Been five years since Rainbow Six Siege first launched, and the community has never been stronger. In celebration of this milestone, Ubisoft Montreal has put together a special video to thank all the amazing players and developers that have helped Siege become the game it is today. Man, this is a bad presentation. I'm not even gonna. So far, <laughs> but I like. I don't know. I don't know what else they could talk about after Rainbow Six. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil. Maybe Did they show something. <laughs> Maybe. Uh. Watch, watch they go through this and not even announce anything new for Siege. Yeah. It, it's like, was it last year or the year before where they brought out the guy just to say that they had passed a player milestone? And that was it. <laughs> this is such a special moment and being at one year anniversary of Rainbow Six. I could never get into Rainbow Six. I don't know why. It just wasn't for me. Oh. I like Siege. I'm just... It's pretty much just Search and Destroy on steroids. Which is cool if you like that, but it gets old for me pretty quick. Connor and some of the guys I used to play with, uh, they are obsessed with it. And it's fun for a bit, but man, I can't play it continuously. We're always driven by you, our community, and together we grow stronger. There is no sequel plan, and we are here for the next 10 years, so expect more Rainbow Six in your life for quite some time. Tous les succès, c'est vraiment le résultat de autant de nous que de vous. Ce jeu, again, this is just going on way too long. <laughs> Now 60 million yeah. players strong. And why wouldn't you put like started. subtitles for what he was saying? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. 
from the devs that build the game this is to the just community a that bad presentation thank you so far all right play now yeah join 60 million 60 players. million <laughs> it's the same exact thing that they did <laughs> they don't even show anything now and take ace and malusi out for a okay they are going to show the update a few days ago Okay. Oh, no, they're not. Or no, they're not. <laughs> what are they doing? Job. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, okay, they have to come back to Rainbow Six at the end or something. I don't know. Well, they have quarantine <laughs> to talk about still, but here's that battle royale that just hit beta. Oh yeah. 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 I haven't watched Actually, any gameplay of it though. Uh, I've watched a little. It what? it's got some unique ideas. Ah, in the hyperscape. That's not supposed to be there. Well, let me get you all to speed, okay? About thirty years ago, everything that we no. feared about our future started to come true. We made some good decisions. We made some bad decisions. Actually, we made a lot of bad decisions. So here we are. Ten billion souls living in the crush of the mega cities. She said twenty years ago, but it flashed back thirty years. Oh, uh, I think she, she said thirty years. Oh, did she? Okay, yeah. I thought I heard twelve. <laughs> that would be hilarious, <laughs> <laughs> right? Everyone a way out. The hyperscape. In the hyperscape, the biggest. Okay. So, Ready Player One vibes. <laughs> yeah. I've never even seen the movie and I got that vibe. Yeah. I only watched like 20 minutes of it and had to sh shut it off. Like, show gameplay, like, describe this game to someone that hasn't played it yet. Like, we don't need yeah. a background on a Battle Royale game. Exactly. You could bring a backstory in later. You, yeah. need, to, you need to show me why I want to play this now. Mm hmm Not a story that doesn't matter at all. Yeah. It's, the story can be there in the background, kind of like Overwatch. Like, if yeah. you really want it, go find it. But, like... It doesn't matter for someone who's Some just jumping in to try and win a match. Some of us for a way out, and for others, a new way altogether. That's what brings us to the edge of the future, to the hyperscape. I'm JC, creative director on Hyperscape. JC's work on Far Cry Primal and multiple Prince of Persia titles has established him as a top creative here at Stand YouTube. Stand in this hallway and don't look at the camera. Just look down the hallway. I'm to the point that I'm going to just criticize every part of this now. <laughs> oh, oh my god, she's made of metal? <laughs> oh, look, an android woman. How original! <laughs> That hasn't been done before. <laughs> Get with it, game designers. <laughs> but I am really excited to see this Far Cry trailer. That's coming up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed Five and uh, New Dawn. Was that yeah, I think I got like halfway through New Dawn. I didn't beat it. Maybe I'll go back to it. Yeah, I beat it. Um, it did some. It did a weird thing with it, with the story that I didn't love, but the gameplay was fun. We introduced the notion of hacks, special abilities that you can pick up on the fly to adapt your tactics. With hacks, you can do things like uh, teleport yourself. Uh, so yeah, the thing with Hyperscape is like uh, you level up your gun so by picking up the same that, gun that you have fun, that are toys okay. or something like that. I haven't so, played it myself, but yeah. Finally, it's made as a spectacle, so all the viewers will be able to interact with the game on different levels through the Twitch extension. 
So every few minutes, there's going to be a vote, and viewers will be able to decide what effect they want to affect the whole battle. Oh, yeah, and, and I forgot there's the, the gravity, Twitch thing, too. Uh, infinite ammo or stuff like that. So players, while this happens, really have to adapt to all kinds of stuff that is happening. So could that potentially give so a me, Twitch streamer an advantage right now, as we speak, we are over somebody who doesn't stream? So it's gonna be available for um, play for all I don't think worldwide. so because it would just it would just happen for everyone. I think, right? I don't know. That's what, like I don't know what people are voting on exactly. Yeah, I I would hope that like that low gravity thing, like when that went in, just it would happen to everyone. I would hope that I haven't played the game myself. Is this on Xbox? When, uh, the P. It just came out on PC. It's only on. It's only in its beta. Gotcha. That's mine. <laughs> Let's show them what I'm made of. I'd be fine to give it a try, though. I mean, I would imagine it's going to be a free-to-play game. Yeah, I'm like that. What's that game that was just announced recently that we were talking about? The EA game? Yeah. Rocket Arena yeah. or something like that? Uh, I can't believe that that's not free to play. I'm sure um, it will be. <laughs> the, uh, I don't know his official title, but a guy at GamePair that I get my reviews from, um, he, uh, oh, it's an open beta now on PC. Okay, cool. Um, he uh, got an interview with them and asked them why Rocket Arena was paid, and they were like, to make sure everyone has an even foothold in the game. And I'm like, what? Production manager Anna Why would I don't know. If, if you go for your play and just give cosmetic paid items, like everyone's on the same foothold there. But that's EA. We're talking to the. We switch different outfits, different fashion statements, different tattoos, different materials until we see them as real individuals, as real people. So the second you pick a yeah, the art style is pretty you cool. See them in game. Yeah, you no, I've always been a big fan of this more cartoony them. art style. It's one of the so reasons the why I love of things like Overwatch, where it's but it could be believable in like a Pixar movie. You know what I mean? Would this person actually like this type of outfit? Would this person enjoy the type of tattoos that we're putting on them? Will they actually like to be in this body? Each season, we plan to produce new outfits for these characters. So we're hoping some of our players are gonna see the effort and maybe even correlate some of the- And maybe even give us money for these outfits. We're very excited to yeah, see- Yeah, right. I'd like to see him like the announce a console beta. Ubisoft has been working closely with console but I guess not. to take advantage of all the extraordinary capabilities these new consoles will offer. Now we have a special guest to tell us a little more. Hey everyone, Phil Spencer from Xbox. Hey! Watch Dogs Phil Nation. Spencer. Ubisoft is supporting smart delivery. So He's you like, will get the and the Xbox Series X will be out. <laughs> on any version of Xbox <laughs> you're playing on. On Series X, you'll get to take advantage of the amazing work the team has done with DirectX Ray Tracing to create an absolutely immersive version of London like you've never so seen So that's cool. Before. I might... Ubisoft has a unique Because I, I do want to give Legion a try works. still. I don't think today was a great showing for them, but they just forward. announced that it's... I'm a in smart delivery, so I might yeah. pick it up day one, I love the and then I've spent exploring the when the Series X come out, just Odyssey. download it. And I can't wait for you to see the gameplay from Assassin's Creed Valhalla that's coming up now. Gameplay. <laughs> yeah, it feels game like, yeah, we didn't show gameplay at our thing. <laughs> now it's time for a deep dive into the world of Vikings. My name is Julien Laferriere, and I'm the producer of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I'm, I'm excited so to see this, ago, we after how much I loved Odyssey. Valhalla, and the reaction from the fans was just amazing. The time period of Vikings is really, really inspiring. When we did our research, we found that, you know, there were not mindless barbarians. <laughs> Vikings were actually farmers trying to find new lands for them to settle. 
And so they had really human motivation. And they were just going to take it away from everyone. Yeah. They're not barbarians. <laughs> They're not bad guys. <laughs> they were just willing to kill everybody on that land if they weren't going to give it to them. Yeah, they just said, hey, I want your stuff right now. You're going to die. meant to be a Viking at that time. And then leaving Norway, which is barren but majestic and just coming by boat in england and see those rolling green hills full of sheep full of life is just this moment that most likely the vikings felt as well you need to see this land of opportunity and this is exactly the feeling we want players to experience in this game it is a personal adventure, you know, it is the story of Eivor. <laughs> I, like I just love that he's like trying to paint Vikings as like, oh yeah, they were totally They're justified. Good guys. You, know, you decide yeah. to start the game. <laughs> they will have to leave Norway to settle in England because you just can't live in Norway anymore. There's too much political pressure, no resources available. Obviously in England, it's full of Anglo-Saxons and other people, and they don't really want you there. So you will have to fight your way there to kind of build your own settlement and see your clan prosper. Vikings were brutal warriors. Shield! And the fact that they were mastering a lot of weapons coming from that guy was not good with his shield. Really <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> kind of he did not get the memo, I guess. Yeah, that they're the supposed to hold the shields higher, the <laughs> of block your face with them. <laughs> yeah, the Vikings were not only fighting face to face, they were masters of stealth and deception when needed. They used basically any sort of tactics they could use to win the battle. So we want to portray the full range of combat that you can imagine coming from the Vikings. We are very happy to finally be able to show you the game we've all been working on. So please enjoy this deep dive into Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This like the male Viking guy looks badass. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I don't have the, they've given the names for the character, right? Viking invasion of England. Uh I think that the names were they came out when they announced like the special editions, like with the statues. Right? Yeah. It was because like, like I think the US gets the male one and Europe gets the female one or something weird like that. Gotcha. Which is weird that they would do it that way, but yeah. You'd assume you'd just order it from them and then select which one you want at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, just, uh, I know people love that stuff. I, it's just never been my favorite. As you prowl England's rivers by I mean, I like the idea that you go from, like, you spot from the one body of land to the other Ground on a boat, and, and you know, you could get attacked in the middle, but I'm not the kind of person that's just going to go around looking for boat battles. Mm -hmm. But this is like an actual raid, which is yeah. justified. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, no, no, no. They were just looking for land for farms, right? Yeah, yeah, no. This they were just noble farmers. <laughs> yeah. Battering <laughs> doors and stealing cargo too heavy for one set of arms. Whatever riches and resources you pillage may be used to develop your settlement, giving you access to useful services. All right, this is cool. Tools and yeah. New settlers. Like, go and raid buildings and set up your own settlement. Yeah, like, you, you're kind of designing your own camp. And a guide for future opportunities. Yeah. The Viking Age was a time of warriors and legends. It feels kind of like, uh, you will find the brotherhood, in a way, with, like, building up your assassin brotherhood. I never played that If one. you... Oh. Uh... You, you couldn't, like, set up a settlement or anything, but you would, like, train 
your recruits and everything and then like send them on missions it kind it kind of looks like you'll be doing something like that here too it, is it just me or does it seem like they're zoomed out further than most it, it does yeah the camera's a little further out than normal i like that you get to see more of the environment brutal new abilities snare them with a viking harpoon pummel them with throwing Yo, let's go. Incapacitate them with the new stun system to keep them at a distance. This is the most badass farmer I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Farmville, right? <laughs> yeah. Justified raiding. Justified pillaging. And become a legendary Viking warrior. Oh, you get a mace. Or you can have a mace. You get to stomp on people. All combinations Dual wielding a mace and a hammer. Including two shields. Two shields? What? Two shield combat? That's what? like super Captain America. <laughs> Not all situations call for violence. In this new oh, land, yep. a Viking must find a way. <laughs> Where'd she go? <laughs> They're doing the same thing like with assassins. Creed one, where yeah, one and all you do is attention in town. Yeah, you just walk into a group of people walking with hoods up. If Where'd they go? Hood and cloak to blend with crowds and slip past watchful eyes. Avor is the An name. There we go. Among the people. Oh, now, that, now they're just gonna From assassinate that dude. And villages to the dense forests and rolling hills of England. I hope they bring back like vital to keeping your if you're stealthy, your assassination will just one hit them. Like in uh Origins and Odyssey, you had to like level yeah. up and upgrade and everything. Which is fine. Search pagan but... and Roman ruins for new activities and yeah. challenges to strengthen yourself and your settlement. The more you explore, yeah, I agree. If you sneak up behind a guy and stab him in the throat with your fucking dagger, he should be dead. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't then have to like at keep attacking him, and then but all his goons come after you. Into England, yeah, the enemy will push back. In a series of climactic moments, Assassin's Creed Valhalla will feature massive assault. <laughs> all I can imagine that guy climbing the ladder. He like jumps on in the guys that are still pushing it up like yeah. yo it falls back what the hell oh. yeah falls it just back, falls back right? <laughs> tomorrow, we assassin's creed valhalla will transport you to wondrous and haunted lands inspired by norse gotta Gaelic give a shout out to how beautiful this game looks yeah it looks real it good challenge and surprise yeah. thank you Matt. with unforgettable characters Thrilling triumphs and tragic losses, giving you the chance to live your own Viking saga. What bone is that? The heart bone? Yeah, you know. <laughs> Stay tuned for more Assassin's Creed Valhalla gameplay in the post shows. Out it said. Yeah. That looks awesome. That's a very yeah. good showing for Valhalla. November 17th. So, yeah, those rumors were Ninth true. 9th century England is truly yep. unlike anything the franchise has seen before. Assassin's Creed Valhalla will release this holiday season on Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, PS4, PC, and Stadia. And the Nintendo Switch. We're close to wrapping up today, but before we go, our CEO... <laughs> that didn't say it was on Steam, though, right? It said it was on Epic Game Store. Store. Yeah. I hope you will have enjoyed what you have seen today and okay. that you will love playing these games one more it? thing this game that leaked four days ago ambitious yeah right and creative lineup of games and we haven't shown you everything yet in fact we have a lot more to come so you will have another a lot Ubisoft more okay forward to reveal even more about our upcoming games but before so there's gonna be another show, Ubisoft forward. We have one more yep. thing to share with you. All right, so here's Far Cry Six, and then at the next one we'll probably get Quarantine, maybe Beyond Good and Evil Two, and Skull and Bones.
Man, this would have been awesome if it didn't leak. Fuck. Mm hmm. I wonder if we'll get confirmation if that kid on the cover is actually Voss or not. I I think it, it's got to be, but I don't yeah. know. Like I think that Far Cry, like the developers are, like, Ubisoft is aware that Voss is like everybody's favorite villain mm -hmm. in, in like most video games ever. And that would Easily. get a lot of people very excited. So, for the record, that's not the same trailer that leaked. Okay. Unless it goes into it more here. Yeah, this, I think this is what leaked. Alright. something for you here. Give me your hands. Papa. Now, the grenade is simply... <laughs> it's a live grenade. I pulled the pin. Start running. The shell <laughs> contains the explosive, the fuse, the handle, and of course, the pin. What are you doing? A really bad time for your thumbs to slip. Now. What do you say? Find the pin, or come? He said, "Follow me." Oh. You will be El Presidente, and our people. Yo, this is fucked. They do not know how to be happy. They are torn apart by opinions, noise, indecision. Strangled by their own freedoms. And even if you have love in your heart, even if you want what's best for them, if you only want to save them from themselves. They will hate you, Diego. Everything you say, do so the kid's name is Diego. Will be wrong. Yeah. I, I don't remember what Voss's name was, like his full name. I, I never played Far Cry 3, so I don't know. It'd be kind of cool if you, like, played as him, and it's like you getting away from him or something. Making your own life. They will answer you with screams. Call you evil. A monster.
Okay. February 18th, okay. Yeah, so that date was confirmed as well. And with that, we're wrapping up our first Ubisoft Forward. Okay. <laughs> Today, we've seen the next generation of Assassin's Creed, the birth of a resistance in Watch Dogs Legion, the cyber chaos of Hyperscape, and the epic reveal of Far Cry's newest installment, along with so much more. Remember, we'll be back later this year with another Ubisoft Forward filled with tons of game news and updates. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so... When do you think that next Ubisoft Forward is? The September? Next one? Um, well, let me turn this down a bit so we can talk. Uh, yeah, I just mean, put it play in the background. Yeah, I feel like September is probably a good guess. I don't know, like, because that would be kind of right before next gen, right? September, October. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think September would be a good time for them to show off more. Yeah, because they'll probably also show off more Assassin's Creed. Like, they'll probably go more in depth to the mechanics and stuff of the gameplay. Yeah, and then show off gameplay for Far Cry 6. Yeah, some of the other stuff, but... Yeah, I don't know. What'd you think of this overall? It was mediocre. <laughs> not yeah, a great show. I agree. If if Far Cry had not leaked, like that ending would have been phenomenal. But unfortunately, it did leak. Um, yeah. But to be fair, we so, we already kind of guessed that we would be getting a Far Cry game. Yeah. Well, yeah, there was so many rumors about it already. But like just knowing it was coming and then... Not really seeing anything substantial. Like, all that did was reveal that the villain is a bad guy. Like, that, oh, look, the Far Cry villain is a crazed leader yeah. who, like, demands full power. Okay, good thing we haven't seen that before in Far Cry. Like, that, it doesn't show off anything new to us. <laughs> It may be bringing back Voss as, like, a prequel story, but, like, we still don't know that for sure yeah, or not. but if, if that's true, that is awesome. Like, if that yeah, is Yeah, no, the that's case. cool. Um, easily the best part was the Valhalla gameplay, which you can see in the background now is just... It, it looks great all around. Um, I really like the freedom to fight with like all your different weapons like you can even fight with two shields if you want to yeah that's, that's really awesome <laughs> that's interesting i i can't wait to see like videos of people playing through the entire game with just two shields mm -hmm. like that's gonna be ridiculous <laughs> yeah um Watch Dogs legion i'm still excited for and it will probably be a game i i uh buy day one if i don't get a review code um, especially since it's going to be in smart delivery as well. Um, so the thing for me about Watch Dogs, it comes out October 29th, which is the end of October, and a lot of mm -hmm. people are anticipating like the next-gen consoles coming out, you know, November, October, November, that time frame. And, like, I don't know. I feel like, because, like, Watch Dogs 2 and 1 were, like, very buggy games. I feel like what could be the case is that, like... I mean, if, we're talking if you, about Ubisoft. Yeah, I know. What what I feel like could be the case is that like these games that are coming out around this time could like not run that great on the Xbox One, you know, consoles. But then if you're playing on like the new gen, like they'll run fine. Like, yeah, I, maybe that, that's my worry about some of these games. Which like to be fair, yeah. I'll be playing it on the next gen stuff regardless. But that still sucks for like majority of people who will be playing on old consoles. Mm hmm. Yeah, my thing with the Watch Dogs Legion stuff that they showed today is that they didn't really explain how the massive delay it got, like how that made the game better or anything, because mostly what they showed was stuff that we got last year. Like, yeah, they went in a little deeper into like different characters that you can get and everything, but we kind of already had an idea that just any NPC that you recruit into your army or the resistance uh yeah. that they're gonna be unique and everything so it's like okay that it definitely didn't need to go on for 15 minutes like that 
that was well, ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and then like that whole opening thing, like right away, I called it out. Said it says not actual gameplay mm. footage. Yeah, and like, and then they're just like, yeah, that was a short film. It's like, that's gonna have nothing to do with the game at all, yeah. other than then just they... showing you more of the like, yeah, you recruit people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they didn't show anything new for it. It was mostly, well, okay, they showed a little bit of new stuff for it, but it was stuff that you just kind of knew would be coming anyway. Um, and then they followed that up with two phone games and then announced that Brawlhalla was coming to phones. Like, yeah, not wow. Good. Not good. Yeah, that, that wasn't great at all. Yeah. I, after, I, that, after that was Assassin's Creed, right? So, yeah, like, yeah. Half Half of this show was phone games. <laughs> yeah, it, but like honestly, what I think they needed to do for Watch Dogs is give us like just some raw gameplay. Like I, I feel like, and I'm sure that that's what they're gonna show at the next Ubisoft Forward. At least I would hope so. I mean, that's um, what they did last year, pretty much already. So we don't really need it, I don't think. But, but like, I mean, we know. Yeah, we, we already know what the game's gonna be like, and we know just like. We don't really need to know the deep dive of that because it's Watch Dogs. It's not really going to be that deep. Yeah, but like, like if there's been like any significant changes to the gameplay or anything, I'd like to see that, considering that it was delayed for a long time. That's what I'm saying. Like it, the, from what they've said today, what they showed today, nothing doesn't different. look. Like game. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be the same game. So it really makes me wonder, like what was the point of the delay like yeah it's great that it could run better and everything but like what really justifies such a long delay because it was originally yeah. coming out in march march yeah like beginning of march i think beginning to mid-march yeah but yeah i mean we'll see how that plays out assassin's creed looks great um yeah i'm gonna be playing that the day it comes out for sure um mm -hmm. but you know Unless, like, the Series X is coming out, like, the following week or something. That's the only case that I would, like, hold off. Is just so that I could play it on the next gen uh, console. Eh, I'll, I'll get it day one regardless, because that's going to be uh, in smart delivery also. So that's going to yeah. be a long enough game. That I'd rather just get a head start on it so I can get that game done with. Yeah, but but like 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 what I'm saying is like if the Series X is coming out like a week or two later, I'm just gonna wait to start playing it. So I'm playing it on the newest console. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, no, I get. That. Uh, yeah, and then what else? The Far Cry, I guess, is the other big thing. We already kind of touched on that. Um, yeah. But yeah, Far Cry is Far Cry. So until they show us gameplay, we really don't have much to talk about other than um, how creepy. It feels like him and his son, you know, like teaching his son all this shitty behavior, I guess. Yeah, it's just standard Far Cry villain stuff. Yeah. Like I was saying, um, I like I could really see that game just ending up being just another Far Cry game again, which is fine. I like I said earlier, I love Far Cry 5. Um, but yeah, it's going to just like. Do we need that again with no changes? Who knows? We'll see. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'll be excited to see more on, like, kind of, like, what kind of new weapons, new, I guess, mechanics, uh, new, um, what, what, like, weapon upgrades and stuff. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, that sums up. Uh, this has been our live reaction to the Ubisoft Forward 2020. I guess the first one, because I we didn't really know that there was going to be another one until towards the end yeah. here but um yeah follow us on twitter at pixel street pod uh we uh do a podcast every week comes out friday mornings uh called pixel street podcast you can find me on twitter at campos 63 and twitch.tv slash campos 63 john where are you at on the internet uh you can just find me on twitter at revex shadows there you have it. Um, yeah, tune in on Friday for a new episode of Pixel Street Podcast, where I'm sure we'll be talking about this again with Connor. Uh, he, may, yeah. he will probably have some insight as to what he thought about it. Uh, we will see you on Friday. Bye.